Hey everyone, Peter McCarron with the Developer Experience team here, and today we're gonna to talk about LaunchDarkly migration flags. Now, if you haven't heard about migration flags, they are a fantastic new tool designed to help eliminate the risk with technology migrations. So before we dive into the demo, let's talk about migrations a little bit. The reason that migrations tend to be so risky is that they're usually involving something very sensitive to our applications, most often data. And if you've ever gone through a database migration, you know how challenging that can be. If something goes wrong, it can not only have huge impacts on the application itself, but across the entire organization and ultimately impact your business as a whole. And so most of the time, a lot of organizations will try to put that off and try and wait as long as possible before moving to new systems. And unfortunately, that's going to slow you down and prevent you from adopting great new technologies, which leads into the second use case. Sometimes a migration is augmenting our existing systems to, to, to support something new, say like an AI tool. What people don't realize is that introducing an AI tool into your application has a bunch of backend implications that you have to account for. And you usually have to use your existing systems in ways that you never have, or you have to migrate to entirely new systems in order to support that tool. So in this demo, I'm gonna show you how we can do something like introduce an AI chatbot into our docs program using LaunchDarkly migration flags. So let's dive into it. All right, so here we are in our code editor, and now I'm gonna walk you through the configuration of a migration flag to show you how it's different than a traditional feature flag. First two steps are the same. Uh, we're going to import our server-side SDK, as well as initialize our LaunchDarkly client. Both of these steps are the same as what you've always done. Right now, migration flags are primarily supported by server-side SDKs. Make sure you check our documentation to see which ones are supported, and whenever new ones are supported, they'll always be updated there. Now, the first thing that you're going to see different is this new LD migrations options. So if you aren't familiar with TypeScript, this is an interface which basically dictates certain configurations that are required as part of the migration process. And in that, there's going to be a few different configs that we have to make sure that we define. We're going to have a read old system. We're going to have a read new block. We're going to have a write old block. And we're going to have a write new block. This is the primary difference of what a migration flag is doing versus a traditional feature flag. What we've done here is we've indicated to the SDK that we have different operations depending on the stage of the migration that we are in. Either we are reading or writing to the old system or we're reading or writing to the new system. By being able to define these, LaunchDarkly SDK can automatically handle each of the, which function it should perform based on the value that it receives from the flag. This is super cool because you don't have to write any type of custom logic where you're passing in different variation types or different parameters for different values. All you have to do is write your code logic on the server in these different functions and then call it later in your API routes. It's a fantastic way for us to be able to test out different variations as well as do some really cool targeting things which we'll talk about in just a moment. Beyond these blocks, we have a couple other configurations that we should be mindful of. We have our execution, which essentially is saying that we want to run this concurrently, so both of these systems are going to be operating at the same time, and we want to make sure that we have latency and error tracking enabled to true. The only thing that we don't have in here, because this is a two-stage migration, is a consistency check. One of the things that's great is that if you're going to be separating out your reads and writes as you're moving between systems, is you could write custom logic to check the data, and then in that same LaunchDarkly screen where we saw our latency and our error rates before, we'd be able to see our consistency checks to know if the data that's getting entered into the new system matches the data in the old system. Really great way, and again, this is all handled by the SDK instead of you having to write custom code to be able to do this as part of your migration process. Once we've defined all those things, we're ready to define our routes. What we have here is we have our get path, and basically what we're saying is that we want to do a migration read. So again, it's going to use either that read old or that read new, depending on the value of the flag, which is the flag key here. It's going to be aware of any context that we have. And we have a default variation to off. So in case we lose connection to launch darkly, or if we are unable to retrieve that flag value for whatever reason, we have a default value in place, which means we can default to our old system, which we know is up and running. On the right side, we just do the same thing. The only difference is that we're probably gonna pass in some sort of parameter that's gonna get entered in. In this case, this is the prompt, the questions that we are asking, and this is returning back the information from that chatbot. 
So combining all this, this is a very different way of handling things versus writing everything custom. I've done logic in the past where I write certain route paths based on certain variations. Instead, what we're doing is we're trusting the LaunchDarkly SDK to be able to handle the process for us, measure the performance metrics, and allows us to have additional controls like things like targeting. So now let's switch back over to the LaunchDarkly UI and we'll talk through the setup process and how you can get started with these. So now back in LaunchDarkly, let's talk about how you set up the migration flag on the LaunchDarkly side now that we've covered how you do it on the code side. Go back out to our feature flag screen here. We'll hit create flag. And what you're going to notice at the bottom here is that we have these different configurations. We're going to select migration and then this screen is going to pop up. We have two stage, four stage, and six stage migrations. If you remember, I talked earlier about how our read and writes weren't separate or how we didn't have consistency checks because we were doing what's called a two-stage migration. Essentially what this means is, are we just moving both functions over at the same time or are we having to separate them out? In the case of something like this where I'm just adding new functionality, a two-stage migration makes sense because ultimately I just want to know if it's on or off or if it's working properly. There's no intermediate stage that I need to go through. Now, let's say I was going to have another feature here where I could add additional docs to my vector database and we wanted to be able to add additional embeddings. Well, that's gonna have some new write logic that isn't available currently. So I'm probably gonna look at something like a four stage migration. In this case, what I wanna do is I wanna test out my write logic, both maybe for my old one, maybe I have an old docs upload button that allows me to add more to launch Dockly. And then what I wanna do is I wanna automatically take those links and be able to add the embeddings to my database. But because those are very different write functions, I'd probably do this as a four stage migration, but I could still have both systems running at the same time. A six stage migration is when you need to have everything completely independent. You can't have both of those systems running at the same time. This is really good for when you're completely changing systems. So maybe instead of using the current Superbase database that I'm using, maybe I'm going over to a hosted vector solution like a Weaviate or a Pinecone or something. And because that's gonna be a much more intensive process and it could have major implications if things go wrong, I'm gonna be really careful about migrating those systems over and I'm gonna do something like a six stage migration. Once you configure all those together, we're ready to go. So let's recap what we've done so far. So we showed you how we can use a feature flag to be able to turn on our chat bot, just like we do with a feature. But then we walk through the code to show you how much different it is using a migration flag versus using a standard feature flag where we can write custom logic for our different read and write functions as we move from one system to the other. We then jumped over back to LaunchDarkly and showed you how we could create a migration flag and walk through what the differences are between a two, a four, and a six stage migration. Now the last piece is everything that I've been doing, I've just been turning it on or off either zero or hundred percent because I'm just one person. I'm doing it all myself. The reality is, is that as we're going through database migrations, we're going to have a number of different users who are interacting with these systems. And so we can actually control the audience size and we can roll it out as gradually as we want to, making sure that everything is working properly before we commit fully to that new system. If we go into our flag here, you're going to notice that there's this button that says add cohort. If I go to the add cohort button, I have three different options for how I can target this migration. I could choose a predefined segment, so maybe I have a number of internal users that LaunchDarkly is already aware of, and I could roll it out only to them. I could build a custom rule where maybe I want to only do this for specific device types that aren't necessarily grouped in a segment, so maybe I don't want my chatbot being available on mobile devices. Or I could do something like set a prerequisite, where I could say, we need to make sure that the front end has been enabled for the new chatbot before we're going to initiate this new migration process. Any of these are going to give me major control over how that migration process is going, so I know that things are going to work the way that I want them to, and I can monitor them as it's going through. The other thing that's unique about migration flags is that we can set different cohort percentages. What that means is that even if we have a rule in place where we're targeting a segment, what we could do is we could say actually only a percentage of that segment is going to see the new chatbot functionality. Again, maybe we're trying to control that to only a handful of users, but we want to have it randomized because we want to make sure it's working on anybody's machine. And in this case, I went ahead and I changed this to where I have 50% off, 50% on in terms of the off or the complete. And if we go back over to our bot here, we can ask another question, say, uh, what is an experiment? It says, hang tight, I'm offline right now. But if we ask it again, say maybe, um, I don't know, what are contacts? Now it works. 
because what we've done here is that we've controlled it to say that about 50% of the time we're going to allow the new API to run, we use that new write process that we have in place to be able to pull the information. 50% of the time we're going to show our hang tight showing that I'm offline. The idea here is this allows me to get more granular in controlling my audience so that if this is not going well, then I don't have as many people who are impacted negatively, but I also can see what happens as I start to scale up my usage. So put all this together, launch Sharkly migration flags, make it really easy to be able to introduce new systems like our new chatbot functionality. I hope you give it a try today. And for more information, make sure you head over to launchdarkly.com. Thanks for watching.